me now, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, Chair of the House Committee on Weaponization, and Matt Taibbi, a witness and, dare I say, constitutional law professor for Mr. Goldman today. All right, Matt, you mentioned something interesting in the hearing, which was fascinating to watch. Now, the fact that free speech used to be just something we probably agreed upon as an American ideal, but that's out the window. Can you explain that? I can't explain it. I mean, I grew up um, a traditional kind of liberal. I, I donated to the ACLU my whole life, uh, and I got most of my ideas about speech from uh, Democrats, people like Frank Church and Paul Wellstone and Russ Feingold, and there is no element of that left in the Democratic Party. In fact, today was kind of an epiphany for me. I, I've kind of given up trying to convince people in this party to care about this issue. They just do not anymore. Uh, it's not a value that they uh, treasure at all. Well, Congressman, to this point, I also wanted to get your reaction to something else that Dan Goldman uh, said when the Hunter Biden laptop issue came yeah. up. Check this out. You have no idea. You know you hard drives can that be it's a manipulated. Are you suggesting the New York Post could participate in a conspiracy to construct the contents of the Hunter Biden laptop? <laughs> no, sir. The problem is that hard drives can be manipulated by Rudy Giuliani or Russia. Well, what's the evidence that and that happened? What's well, there the is actual evidence of it, but the point is it's There's not no the evidence thing. Thing. So you're engaging in a conspiracy. I'm glad. Okay, the fact that this man is in Congress is a shock. Now, Russia manipulated the contents of the hard drive of Hunter Biden. You have to give him credit, Congressman, for actually covering well, every base here. That's yeah. shocking. Very, yeah, very true. But we actually had witnesses come testify that said the FBI knew that the laptop was real. They just didn't want to tell us. Everyone knows it's real, for goodness sake. We've seen the documents, emails and stuff that have come from it. So that was ridiculous. But this is scary where the... because. We had a, one of our other witnesses made a great point today as well. She said, when you get rid of the First Amendment and the Fourth Amendment, that those are foundational to the to, to Western civilization. You don't have liberty if you don't have that. And they, they were trying to censor election information. They were trying to censor COVID information. It was scary where they went, where they want to go, where the left wants to take this. But three big things today. We released a report that said YouTube was being pressured by the Biden administration to take down content, just like they pressured Twitter, just like they pressured Facebook. The two guys who were responsible for the second thing, Andy Slavitt and Rob Flaherty, we subpoenaed them. These were the two guys at the Biden administration. And then, of course, the big takeaway is the one you played first. 35% uh, uh, taking down posts and stuff, 35% <laughs> censorship is still censorship. Is and frankly, the other 65% is the chilling effect you have on all speech when there's government saying you might want to take these posts down. That's how frightening this whole thing is. I just keep thinking if Trump had done X, Y, or Z and coordinated oh. X, Y, or Z, yeah. they would be like chaining themselves to the White House fence tonight. All right, Matt, you had a, a fascinating exchange with one of our favorite Congresswomen, Debbie Wasserman Schultz today. We'll roll this. Should social media companies allow rape and murder to be live streamed by terrorists on their platforms in order to create fear and incite violence? I believe that would violate their terms of service. Would it so, not? so your answer is no. It, it should not do. They, they should not be allowed to do that. Live stream rape and murder? No, right. I, think that, I think that would count as speech that would be prohibited under their terms. Good, of good. You do have absolutist policies, um, but I do least, not have absolute. Least, I do. I do not have. Please don't interrupt me. If a Homeland Security official echoed your opinion, you would call it censorship. So, Matt, she's trying to equate live streaming a murder and a rape to political or scientific speech about the issues of the day. I mean, how, again, I keep saying, these are people who are actually elected to important positions of power in our federal government, and they're just stupid people. I'm sorry, they are <laughs> stupid, stupid people. And I don't say this as a, you know, former law clerk. I say this as an American. They are stupid, and it's terrifying how stupid they are. I mean, it's, it's mind blowing. Uh, the, the, the Dan Goldman exchange was incredible to me. I, I wondered, you know, he's an attorney. I, I, I wondered if he ever did defense law, if he went into court and said, Your Honor, my client only is 35% guilty. Um, was, that, was that the tactic? Uh, he was essentially conceding the crime, but saying it was only a percentage crime. 
Uh, and Deputy Wasserman Schultz uh, said, uh, accused me of saying the exact opposite of what I've said on record uh, probably more than a dozen times. And But that's been their tactic, as the chairman knows, throughout the, these hearings. Uh, they're not interested in, the, in, in the, the subject matter. They just say, answer yes or no to this ridiculous question, and, and that's their entire contribution to the, to the debate. <laughs> And again, everyone watching tonight, I want everyone to understand that Matt Taibbi and I probably don't agree on much. You know, right? We're, you're a liberal, I'm a conservative, but we both believe in the cherished, time-honored tradition of free exchange of ideas, free speech in the United States. We agree. That's what makes us special as Americans. Yep. So that's that's what it's all about. Have a great debate, disagree, go have a beer, whatever. But they don't want that. They do not want that to happen. That is terrifying for conservatives, liberals, who are true liberals. Now, Congressman, today the Washington Post reported that the federal government has stopped warning some social networks about foreign disinformation campaigns. The shift in communication signals how ongoing litigation and Republican probes in Congress are unwinding efforts once viewed as critical to protecting U.S. national security interests. Congressman, it seems like this is a win for you yeah. all because all of this was bogus from the outset. Yeah. Right, and they're now saying they're the victim. So they've been they've been involved in censoring American <laughs> free speech, Americans' First Amendment liberties, and they're now claiming, oh, we're the victims because we're in, we're exposing that. Give me a break. I mean this and, and understand Laura. This is it's you're, and under the First Amendment, you can say things that aren't accurate. Right. But what not they were popular. taking down, yeah, and not popular. But what they were taking down was true stuff. And you called you well, relative to COVID. You called this. I remember. I, I was you were interviewing me in, on, in April of 2020, and you said you watch. They will be taking down. They're coming after our liberties. They'll be taking down. And they they were doing it. And so what Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberg and these others who first exposed the Twitter files someday in, in the future they're going to look back and these guys. What they've done for our country, when they look back right. in history, they're going to say this was a great thing. And this is great that they're not maybe conservative Republicans, that they're from the, from the left, but this they is love not about the left First Amendment. Right. They this love is, the First Amendment. This is not about left or right. They should win the Pulitzer Prize yep. for what they did, yep. both of them. They're real journalists. I agree. I'm not sucking up to wow. you, Matt, but you're, real, you you're, so a real, you're an actual journalist, and you're also a fin, phenomenal writer. My old friend Don Imus uh, loved you as well. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, great Don. to see you tonight.